Super Smash Bros. has too many sword fighters, too many Fire Emblem characters. At least, that's what people say. Does Super Smash Bros. have too many swordsmen, though? This is a common complaint I've seen about these games, especially Ultimate. There are straight-up editorials about this. But really, does Super Smash Bros. have too many swordsmen? Also, a secondary question. Does Super Smash Bros. have too many Fire Emblem characters? Let's look at the hard numbers. First, we need to establish something. What is a sword fighter in Super Smash Bros.? For the purposes of this video, I'm going to consider only characters who primarily use a sword as sword fighters. This means that while Kirby does technically use a sword in his up special and outright has one in his final smash and ultimate, Kirby is not primarily a sword fighter. There's some case-by-case -case examples that I'll talk about later though. Additionally, I won't be counting characters who have multiple characters or outfits in the same character slot, so Pyra and Mithra are considered one character. Same goes for like, I don't know, Dark Link and Link. I doubt anyone would really fight me on this, but someone somewhere will make a comment if I don't say this now. Alright, let's start with the original Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64. In Super Smash Bros., there's really only one sword fighter, and that's Link. He uses his sword and his boomerang. I mentioned Kirby earlier, but as I said, Kirby's one special that involves a sword doesn't really count. So honestly, this one's a bit of a short one. Super Smash Bros. only has 12 characters. There's one sword fighter, and that's Link. One in 12 is 8.3%, but honestly, I don't even really think I needed the percentage here. Let's move on to some juicier stuff. Super Smash Bros. Melee for the GameCube introduced 13 characters on top of the 12 from the last game. To get this out of the way immediately, Ganondorf's promotional art shows him with his sword, but he does not use it at all in Melee. We will come back to him later though. So we have Link, who returns from Smash 64, then there's Young Link, who has an incredibly similar moveset. Additionally, there's Marth and Roy, who both have nearly identical movesets. They do, however, use swords. The total roster size of Super Smash Bros. Melee is 25. Of those 25 fighters, four are sword fighters. 4 in 25 is 16%. While that is an increase from the last game, I still don't feel like 16% is too many, plus the roster size is significantly larger this time. Melee did, however, introduce the infamous Fire Emblem character. Of the roster, two characters are Fire Emblem characters, but that's only 8%. Not a whole lot here. In fact, here's where they stack up. Moving on to Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Wii. On Brawl's roster, there are five characters that are sword fighters out of a total of a 35 character roster. Let's talk about this one for a second. Some people may count Pit as a sword fighter. However, Pit uses a weapon called the Palutena Bow. The bow, while functioning mainly as a bow, also contains two short blades. Some people might consider this a sword, but honestly, is a short blade a sword? It kinda looks like a sword, I guess, but so do daggers. And daggers are definitely not swords. In this case, I am not counting Pit as a sword fighter. So, 5 out of 35 is 14.28% of brawl fighters using swords. Of those sword fighters, two of them are Fire Emblem characters, who make up just 5.71% of the game's total roster. That is not really a big amount. But once the roster starts getting bigger, we start seeing different numbers. Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and the 3DS has a couple of special cases here. Ganondorf does have a custom move that kinda sorta includes a sword, but it doesn't really count to me because it's not his primary method of battling, let alone even in his default moveset. Ganondorf, for this game, is not a sword fighter. Corrin is also kind of a special case. Corrin uses more than just a sword, but still very prominently uses a sword. Corrin's abilities are fairly varied, but when it comes down to it, you're really just supplementing the sword. I'm counting Corrin as a sword fighter. So let's look at the hard numbers. The total number of characters in this game is 58. Of those 58, 12 use swords. Of the total roster size of 58, 12 is 20.68%. Now let's look at Fire Emblem characters. Out of the 58 characters, including the DLC, 5 are Fire Emblem characters. Out of 58, that's just 8.62%. Honestly, these numbers are really not as high as I personally expected so far. But let's move on and we'll see how it looks by the end. In Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo Switch, I'll have to explain some of these characters. First, Ganondorf's smash attacks in this game now use a sword. While I still wouldn't consider him completely a sword fighter, it would be more inaccurate to say that he outright isn't one, since multiple attacks he has now use his sword. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, I will consider Ganondorf a sword fighter. When it comes to Joker, I've seen people online call him a sword fighter, but given that a dagger is definitely not a sword, don't fight me on this, I'm not counting him. Mega Man also has a sword as his forward aerial, but again, it's just one move and I think it would be a stretch to call him a sword fighter. It's the same logic behind me not calling Kirby one. Byleth technically uses multiple kinds of weapons, but they also use their sword very prominently, just like Korin. For the sake of the video, I am calling Byleth a sword fighter. Now on 
to Steve. This one's gonna be a bit controversial, but I do not consider Steve a sword fighter. Let me explain though. Steve has an incredibly varied kit, including his sword, but also including his pickaxe, his anvil, a minecart, lava buckets, his axe, and even TNT. His sword is not his main primary weapon. In fact, he doesn't really have a main weapon. It's more like he has a variety of tools that he uses offensively. Calling Steve a sword fighter is honestly doing a disservice to his kit and to Minecraft. I'm sure a ton of people are going to disagree with me, but I have also played a lot of Minecraft. I know that the weapon that you use is up to your playstyle. You might be a sword person, you might be a bow person, you might even be a trident person. No matter what, you have a variety of tools and there's no one best tool, even in Super Smash Brothers. Then we have Sora. Sora uses a weapon called the Keyblade. The Keyblade is not inherently a sword, however it definitely is used like one. Additionally, there's all kinds of Keyblade variants and while most of them still look vaguely like a key, you've got some like the Soul Eater, Sleeping Lion, Bond of Flame, Oblivion, and Way to the Dawn that are straight up stabbing devices. It's actually called a sword on at least one occasion in the Kingdom Hearts games too. I'm counting him as a sword fighter. So with that part out of the way, let's move on to the statistics. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there are a staggering 86 playable characters. 20 of those characters I would consider sword fighters, and they make up 23.25% of the total roster. That's almost a quarter, but that also means that over 75% of the roster are not sword fighters. If half the roster were sword fighters, I would totally agree that there are too many, but 23% really isn't that much. As for the Fire Emblem characters, there's 8 characters out of a roster of 86. That's only 9.3%, less than 10%. In fact, there's more Mario characters on the roster than that, and that's not even counting Yoshi. Fire Emblem characters are also tied with Pokemon with 8 characters, and it's only just barely ahead of Zelda's 6 characters. I'm gonna be real with you here, I don't think Ultimate has too many sword fighters or too many Fire Emblem characters, but we're not done. Just because we finished with Ultimate doesn't mean there's not more to talk about. At the end of the day, I truly don't believe there are too many sword fighters. However, some people's complaints were specifically about the DLC. I included the DLC characters in the numbers and statistics for the previous games, but let's look at just the DLC characters and see how it stacks up. So in Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS, we have a total of seven DLC characters. Of those DLC characters, three were sword fighters. That's 42.85%. Out of those seven characters, two were Fire Emblem characters. That's a total of 28.57%. Now, I will hold my judgment for a second while we look at the ultimate and final numbers, and then I'll tell you how I feel about this. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there were a total of 12 DLC characters. Of those 12, five were sword fighters. That's a total of 41.66%. Of the 12, one was a Fire Emblem character, 8.33%. Now, let's tally up all the DLC. The total number of DLC characters in any Super Smash Bros. game is 19. Of those 19, 8 are sword fighters. That's 42.1%. Of those 19, 3 are Fire Emblem characters, 15.78%. So while I don't think Super Smash Bros. as a whole has too many sword fighters, I will say that I can empathize with those who thought the DLC introduced too many sword fighters. But that being said, the movesets of these characters are all super different and unique. Outside of, you know, clones and Echo fighters, I think every single character in this game plays wildly differently, even all of the sword fighters. Well, actually, this game has way too many sword fighters because everyone is a sword fighter! Sakurai lied to us this whole time! Everyone has a sword! Hey, this video was a bit different from my normal content, but I hope you still enjoyed it. I'm hard at work on the next I Played Every Game video, but I wanted to shake it up just a little bit. Plus, this gives me a bit more time to focus on that video and making it better than it would have been. I'm also working simultaneously on another video that's probably going to take a couple of months. That video has some really cool stuff, and I can't wait for you all to see it. That being said, thank you all for watching, and please consider subscribing if you like this kind of stuff. You're all fantastic, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.